last three days, we have engaged in productive scholarly exchanges and collegiality, so emblematic of the spirit of calm. Yes, we are in business. What is this business? In a nutshell, the business of CAR is the practice and promotion of the study of the many facets of the experiences of people of African descent in the continent and the diaspora, especially the study of the perennial struggle for liberation. As practitioners and students of various fields of study pertaining to the black experience, we are conversant with the tortuous intellectual history of the discipline known variously as Black Studies, Africana Studies, African and African American Studies, Afro-European Studies, Africology, etc. Fiercely resilient, the study of the Black experience in its various forms has survived brutal assaults on its legitimacy and vitality. The devaluation of black studies is firmly embedded in the disrespect and dehumanization of the people whose experiences and contributions to humanity that academic investigative culture seeks to address. What is there to meaningfully study about a people whose languages were casually dismissed by Herodotus as bat-like? or whose continent, Hegel concluded, had no development and therefore no history. Or who, in a period when African modern nations were emerging and the civil rights movement was at its apogee, were described by eminent Oxford University professor Hugh Trevor Roper as engaging in, and I quote, the unedifying gyrations of barbarous tribes in picturesque but irrelevant corners of the globe, end of quote. These Kant examples here represent only a fraction of the historical intellectual maligning of people of African descent, an injustice that in turn challenged the very legitimacy of any discipline that would dare study, describe, and explain their agency in human development. But individuals and institutions forged on, creating for posterity an unrelenting attestation to the multiplicity, vibrancy, and vitality of the black experience. The formulated and promulgated insightful body of knowledge, concepts, analytical categories, and methodologies for understanding the black experience. Today, we use, embrace, challenge, and revise the legacies of the griots of Africa, the first professional custodians of black history. Check Anta Du, whose rigorous academic investigations revealed the extent of the role of African civilizations in world history. W.E.B. Du Bois, whose double consciousness is often invoked in discourses on the increasing complexities of blackness and multiple identities. Jane and Paulette Nadal, Leopold Senghor, Ivy Cicel, and Leon Damar, who developed negritude. Their Spanish-speaking counterparts, poet Nicolas Guillen, and surrealist Wilfredo Lem, who used their work to articulate negrismo. Franz Fanon, who dissected the mind of the colonized and left us enduring tools to study the psychology of black protest. Stuart Hall, who addressed diaspora and exile as frameworks for the study of the black experience. Novelist Bucci Emecheta, who provided valuable tools to study the unique diverse experiences of African women and Molife Asante, whose Afrocentricity has elicited as much criticism as it has garnered acclaim. As the 20th century gave way to the 21st, we see the unfolding of more concepts, interpretations, and analytical tools and categories 
underscoring the sustained vibrancy of black studies. As some sessions on the program of this conference and numerous others like it vividly illustrate, Afropolitanism and Afrofuturism are in the for forefront of the new genres in black studies which seek to keep up with the rapid changes wrought by migrations, diasporas, and technology in the 21st century. This minuscule representation of scholarly anchors reveal a lot about black studies. Admittedly, as professionals, this list must sound rudimentary to us, but it is one that serves to remind us of the essence of what we do and why the Collegium for African American Research is important as a resource. As the list demonstrates, black studies is global and transnational a quality that many students of the black experience are quick to realize. I was reminded of this recently when one of our Texas A&M University Africana Studies students noted on his or her program assessment, this was done anonymously, um, noted on um, their um, program assessment survey, and I quote, I thought I was minoring in Africana Studies. Turns out, in practical terms, that I measured in the world. Mm -hmm. Indeed, as this student and so many others like her or him discovered, Africana studies is not only extensive in its focus on multiple peoples and locations, but also in its interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary address of topics and emphasis. Race, color, class, gender, sexuality, religion, migrations, and dynamics of different types of discrimination, oppression, struggle, and activism. But even as students like ours at Texas A&M are applauding the inclusivity of black studies, disciplinary and area studies factionalism continues to pose a threat. Black studies, like other disciplines, has its subfields or sub-areas, African studies, African American studies, African American literature, African literature, African philosophy, African philosophy, African American philosophy, Caribbean studies, Afro Latina, Latino studies, and Caribbean literature, which has its own subfields within a subfield, best exemplified by Francophone Carib Caribbean literature. Antilanite and Creolite. These divisions in themselves are not balkanization. As with any discipline, the existence of subfields are necessary in the pursuit of expert specialization. What is inimical for black studies is when the subfields do not dialogue or when they engage in hostile, unhealthy competition with each other like when African Americanists completely abandon efforts to work with Africanists because of what is perceived as the latter's lack of understanding of or a deliberate inattention to the centrality of race and color. Or like when Africanists recoil and protect their scholarly territory from what is perceived as the Western imperialistic-like attempts by African Americanists to infuse diasporic categories and tools like Afrocentricity to the study of the African continent. This is where CAR has rendered its best services, namely in creating viable bridges for dialogue and collaboration between disciplinary and area studies subfields as well as bringing together the practitioners from different locations of the Atlantic world and from across generations. I applaud the founders of our organization, that group of Europeans who had the foresight to seek in the creation of a professional organization ways to promote interdisciplinary and transatlantic dialogues and collaborations in black st studies. In its almost quarter century existence, 
car has grown and achieved many of its founding objectives. But like Black Studies, it still has a lot more to do. As I applaud the resilient growth of Black Studies, I must also comment on what I suspect we all know, that Black Studies is still under assault, and some of the problems of the 19th and 20th centuries persist. The rigor, relevance, and even legitimacy of Black Studies as academic scholarly endeavor are still being challenged after all the glaring accomplishments of centuries of interrogation and explication of the black experience. Blatant attacks have been made on black studies programs and departments, as well as on their curricula and members. Increasingly, African studies academics, especially those who dare to practice their discipline um, as what Kindly Andrews would call scientific, would call science of liberation. I learned that this morning. Um, especially those who would, call, who would dare to practice it as what Andrews would call science of liberation are being blacklisted and attempts made to devalue their work or brand it as dangerously incendiary. The very institutions that serve as repositories of artifacts and sources for the scholarly analysis of the black experience are not immune from this aggression. For example, just this past May, a noose was found in an exhibit at the new National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, DC. This is so symbolic because basically what that's saying is that black studies is going to be lynched. Therefore, more than ever, CAR must endeavor to meet these 21st century challenges. In the second decade of the last century, a similar challenge to black studies occurred within a larger context of racism, xenophobia, and bigotry. It was in direct response to this climate that Carter G. Woodson conceived and launched in 1915 the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, an organization that continues to exist as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALA. We recognize what Woodson saw almost a century ago, that a focused and dynamic scholarly organization can be a powerful tool against injustice. Ida B. Wells articulated this sentiment when in her academically grounded expose of the real nature of lynching, she resolved that black scholarship could be utilized to challenge a racist social order. In our times, as we reflect on the business of car, we recognize that the problem has become more intricately intersectional. So black scholarship must challenge racist, sexist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, and other forms of religious bigotry. What we do every two years and in between must be meaningfully tied directly and indirectly to the African descended communities that we study. We must address the question, what is Black Studies impact on the analysis of political, economic, and social issues facing black and other marginalized communities. Our work is only valuable if it is informed by the real life experiences of people and is useful to the people and institutions it studies. CAR must be a staunch facilitator of the production of creative, <coughs> significant and distinctive research and pedagogical projects that are beneficial to this 21st century global community. Although the word research is key in the organization's name, how research informs and shapes teaching and learning about past and contemporary situations and developments that affect and shape the black experience is tied to what we do as individual scholars, students, and activists. 
Just as the organization's focus is now well beyond African-American studies, so must its objective beyond research. Therefore, pedagogy, especially when it is liberating and transformative, is vital to the business of CARD. When the organization, embark when the organization embarks on the long overdue change of name, I hope its members will use the opportunity to pointedly address the organization's future directions as a black studies organization that addresses the many facets of the worldwide black experience, not just for research development, but more clearly also for necessary societal change. As one of my favorite scholars of black studies, the late man in Maribel once declared, black studies is descriptive, critical, and prescriptive. Let us all endeavor to quote the saying, put our shoulders to the wheel to help car accomplish its business. The foundation for a truly global and inclusive organization has been laid. Formidable transatlantic relationships have been formed. Interest across generations has ensured an increasingly diverse and vibrant membership. This membership diversity is underscored further in the beautiful array of disciplinary and area studies. Taking all this into consideration, I say, car is in a good place. An advantage we must capitalize on to work together to help the organization live up to its name, hopefully soon its new name, and objectives. Finally, once again, CAR has lived up to its reputation of hosting its conferences in the coolest locations. You know I am using coolest here, figuratively. Anyway, Malaga, like the other places we have held CAR conferences, is a wonderful city with so much to see and do. I hope that you are able to find time in the midst of contributing to the business of CAR to enjoy the city and interact with its people. Let me end, as I began, with a note to our host country by saying, otra vez, muchísimas gracias a todos.